And this stuff is something like I've never seen before. Yeah, this is weird. And it's almost too sharp. Look at this. This is what up by us we call a conglomerate stone. So all that gravel just kind of smashed in there. I'm so fortunate. <laughs> I get the opportunity to do projects like this and bring out super talented people like Alan. And then you're here too. <laughs> when we do projects like this, we have to have guys that really, really know their stuff. We're moving fast, building these awesome water features and having guys that have the same kind of style and understand like- Can we pause for a second while I find yeah. that bird? Like, <laughs> Jesus. <laughs> build a pondless waterfall. The easiest way to learn something is to teach it. We are rocking and rolling on this pond. We appreciate you guys tuning in. Hey, good morning to everybody, and it is definitely morning. I um, have kind of, you know, what do you call it, that breakfast face, that early morning, my eyes aren't quite open, my brain is trying to work, <laughs> but it's going to be a good day. The rain has stopped. Yesterday was incredible. We left here, it was pouring. Tornadoes came through all of Dallas area. Sirens were going off everywhere. We had no idea what to expect when we got to the job site today. Well, maybe we kind of did. Mud, mud, mud. <laughs> so you can see just just puddles everywhere, mud everywhere, boots already getting destroyed and one of the hard things about working with muddy boots is as we come in and out of the feature it just means we have to clean so many more of the rocks and so we really try to just keep one path so we're not cleaning everything but it is gonna be a challenge <laughs> we've got pools of water everywhere today will still be a great day though building ponds in the mud is still more fun than not building ponds at all so today the goal is to continue to work on that waterfall I promised you yesterday I would take you through and just kind of show you the progress. We talked so intensely about the placement of some of those rocks in there and I really wanted to kind of walk you guys through that and how things are gonna work. So if you can remember way back when, when we just did some excavation in here and we were shooting depths based off of our transit for the excavation, we based everything off of this. This is the weir stone. So at that point, water will back up to a certain point. Woo! Almost went down. <laughs> we come here, we went back this way, we dug this out a little deeper in here. We knew that was gonna be about seven inches of water. So you can see that's already filled up with a, quite a bit of water. In fact, if I put my boot in there, someplace it, oh, right there, big hole. Big hole right there. <laughs> so it dips down quite a bit back in through here. As we come back this way, you can see it dips down back in there. We added those big boulders that Jack's on to try to push that water. So as that water rips around over in that way, it scours out this area, these big rocks here, push that water to go that way. Every now and then we have some rocks just kind of jetting up just above the surface, which will give some interesting action in through there. And then I think the part we're all so excited about. So we have some water in here now from the rain last night. So we have an idea of what it's going to look like. That water is going to come up probably another four inches by the time it gets maybe even five inches. So we're going to have like maybe that much of the rock sticking out of the water. So you'll see it just looks like it's a cool little pathway going through the middle. Waterfall right behind it. That's going to look incredible. Did you go over the waterfall yet? No. Why don't you? Hey. Here's that pool area. So you can see how low it is from here. By the time we finish gravel and maybe some slate work in here, that water is gonna come up, which should be about there on those stepping stones. So we have these cool stepping stones kind of coming through here, right where Jack's at. They're gonna lead up and then over to there. But the part we're so excited about is the way this all turned out. And then this waterfall over here just really came together nice. We don't really know what's gonna happen here, right? Like we put this rock in and we're like, wow, that's gonna be so cool. I don't know what it's gonna do. Okay. We're, we want to get water coming off of this rock here and we're hoping this little knob is going to kind of keep it in play where it's not going to dump on top of the, the step. So we'll have a cascade coming down into here, but it's also going to be feeding a lot of water over into this little cutout here. I imagine this will be like churning from the inertia of the water. Then this is actually lower than this, so I can see water coming off of this, off of here. We're thinking it's probably going to like go like this and maybe bounce down this way. It should be super cool. It's a very you know, gnarly looking rock. If you use the shape of it, they have the water come over. I'm excited to see how this turns out. But our plan now is we've got to get our next set of liner in tucked in behind here. That's our overlap. This liner comes all the way up onto the shelf here, probably back like another six feet. The liner that's going to be fed from that stream has to come down into here. So it's going to overlap like a shingle. This way the water coming over is going to stay in the system and not back up and get outside of the liner. Right now, Alan's just getting it all cleaned off, getting all this water out of here. We're going to pull the tarps up, get our excavation, you know, polished up and get some rock padding. Get some lighter and get some rocks going. All right, 
Well, I'm hoping next time I see you, it's at least a little warmer out here. I doubt it's gonna be any drier, but I should be able to see just a little bit warmer. <laughs> Bye. Well, I apologize because I didn't show you guys progress really throughout. Of course, we have our GoPro footage that just showed us kind of going this way, that way, this way. I thought at the end of the day here, I take the time to just kind of explain what we did. It is cold and I don't know why. It's March in Texas and it's 40 some degrees with wind that's just brutal, but it is what it is and we muscled through it. So we're just about ready to pack up. I wanted to show you area I was just kind of working on today. This waterfall is gonna be sick. So remember the idea again is we got kind of a high point right in here and then I kind of filled this in with a rock, got that thing sealed up in there. So that being higher, this being higher here, then water should come over through here. We've got that rock there and I don't know if you can see how it kind of like comes up like this. And I'm gonna talk a little louder because the saw went on, but <laughs> hopefully you can hear it. As that rock comes up like this, the inertia of the water, the force of that water will kind of come this way, pushing it this way to get on top of this flat rock. Then some of that rock, because it's slope down in here is gonna come swirl around in this natural depression in here, which you guys can see a little bit better now, but it'll kind of swirl around this way. Some of it's gonna come this way. Some should come through here. Who knows, right? I'm just super excited about this. And what I love about it is look at how simple the waterfall is. You've got one big rock there, one big rock there, one back there and there, and then just some other stuff. So whether we're doing big giant waterfalls or even small rocks, the most natural looking waterfalls are the ones where you can use the fewest rocks possible. Possible. And this one is no substitution. Is that the word I'm looking for? This one's the same. <laughs> I still have to come back up and through here and obviously layer in some stone back and through here. But look at how great this is gonna look as that water twists this way, then comes back this way. And then this is what we worked on today, all of this. But I'm just gonna kind of give you guys a flyby of how that water's running. It comes like so, back up through here, up and really close to the fire pit here, a little bit underneath this guy with the knives on it. We choked it down a little bit, right in here really to help force that water this way. Then comes back up and through here, so on, back up and through here. We were able to find a home for this big long guy, kind of comes back this way, and then it's gonna go all the way back up into here. And then over in here, we're gonna do a group of urns before it goes that way underneath the sidewalk and over in that space there. So we got quite a bit done today. And as we look downstream, you can really see how that stream's gonna just kind of twist and turn. <laughs> It almost 
makes you want to be a river, right? <laughs> Good job today. I love it. I can't wait to see that water moving through here, just collecting in these eddies, but also speeding up in those pinch points. It's gonna look incredible. What's your favorite part so far? All the pinch points. <laughs> <laughs> no, I, I don't know, I think this is gonna look cool because that water is just gonna kind of cruise back and forth and get choked down to those areas, open back up. It's gonna get, gonna have a nice sound from it. Nice babble and brook. Hey, Uncle Matt, stop hiding behind the tree. It's <laughs> <laughs> out the side. <laughs> what do you think so far? It was hard to figure out what you were doing at first. <laughs> now I understand, it looks good. Have we made a big enough mess? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's a wrap for today. We'll be back tomorrow. I heard tomorrow was supposed to be 20 degrees warmer, so that's great. Hey, pond girls, pond boys, men, women, kids of all sizes. <laughs> Whatever. It is Wednesday morning and it is day three, four for Jack, beginning of day three for Jack, Allen, and I, and the sun is out. There's no rain. There's still a little bit of mud left. Tornadoes will tend to do that, but we are super optimistic today. Today is a go get them day. Let's just recap really quick what we've done so far. If you can remember, day one, Jack and I came out here. We dug all of this out, all the way up into where Alan's at, way back over there. Dug it all out. We seamed a liner right in here, uh, there-ish. Seamed a liner in here, and then got ready for Alan on Monday. So we came on Monday, we rocked in all of this really focusing on the curves and twists and turns and making sure we didn't lose those curves and everything else. Tuesday, we worked through the rain all day. It rained really, really bad Tuesday night. And then Wednesday, we came in, we started finishing up this waterfall. Today, I will completely finish this. Yesterday, we rocked in the other 40 some feet, 50 some feet of stream. And today, big, big day, big, big day, sun will usually do that for us. Jack and Alan, why don't you come over here, Alan? Because Alan, heck, Technically, I haven't really officially introduced you. This is what year, Artist of the Year? 2016. 2016 Artist of the Year. Pretty amazing, man. Especially when he's standing next to that guy. He looks so <laughs> much better. You know what's so oh, yeah. <laughs> That's about what he looks like. I'm so fortunate. I get the opportunity to do projects like this and bring out super talented people like Alan, and then you're here too. <laughs> um, no, but when we, when we do projects like this, we have to have guys that really, really know their stuff. We're moving fast, building these awesome water features and having guys that have the same kind of style and understand like the functionality as well as the aesthetics of a, a water feature is extremely important. Can we pause for a second while I find yeah. that bird? Like, <laughs> Jesus. <laughs> so what are we trying to get done today? We will have those urns in. I want to get some big rocks. I've got a really cool rock over there I probably should show you that we, we picked out for going up against the urn. We got to get the seam in this morning and the thing that we all, like where I think we have to do like Rochambeau to see who's going to do the seam. I'm going to work on finishing the waterfall. <laughs> So if you guys want to play with each other, like that's cool. <laughs> Let me show you this rock, come on. All right, so we're gonna have to seam right in through here, excavate this out a little bit more, and then we'll probably get to the point where we start popping out this sidewalk in here, because we're gonna build a custom wooden bridge. Yeah, that's gonna be really cool. But let me show you this rock. I saw this come in. Actually, we were at the stone yard. We can yep. this one. Well, and here's what's been challenging with this job. We only have so many large rocks, and so as much as we wanted to use all of the character boulders right away, yeah. we really have to kind of manage so how many have, of those things. I'd say probably 10 big character boulders. And like you said, we have to be super careful about how many we use in one spot. But this rock here, like if you look at it, I mean, it's a cool rock, right? It's got this lichen and moss on it. It's got some cool shape, but you got to think a little different in here. So come around this side. Oh, this thing's awesome. Check this out, like right here. Look at the character, like at all sides of this. Super cool. So you see that flat bottom right there? <laughs> Oh, I gonna, see it. We're we'll going to stand that bad boy up. up. What, what I like about it is this piece right here. There's a big cutout behind this. Uh -huh. This standing up, an urn's going to tuck in right behind this and it'll reveal from behind it. So there'll be an urn probably this much higher than it. Cascading water and then we're going to figure out how to group the rest of it. Probably put a couple of these other really cool ones around it. We're going to do three urns. And we're looking at shoving one whole pump through those three urns. So it's going to be a lot of action. It'll be right there as you're pulling up to the house. That's going to be the focal point. You won't know about the whole rest of the 150 feet of stream. You're going to see that urn first, that urn collection. Jack, I think it's so awesome that you see the different sides of this rock. And so I think a lot of guys would have come in and here's a flat bottom. You could have taken that rock and set it up this way, which wouldn't have been wrong at all. You're still getting a pretty amazing face. By the way, it came out of the earth. It yeah. Came out this way. But with this flat bottom here, 
we can stand that thing up. It'll stand probably five feet tall. Totally be to scale with the large urns that are gonna go in. I love it, I love it. Then we've got like a couple really cool ones that'll, that'll match this. We've got this rock, which effortlessly we could use for a waterfall. Natural high side, natural high side, little channel in between. The harder part about using this just for the waterfall is then to make it look right, we need a giant boulder over here and a giant boulder over in here. Yeah, if you just stuck a small rock here, it would look contrived. Yeah. Way. You've got to make it fit the scale. So to do all that is not going to work here. We have another rock picked out, that bridge waterfall. This, we're going to have to really think about how we want to use this rock. If we stand it up this way where that's the bottom, yeah. and then this is the face, it looks like a dog. So, so we'll probably tie it in rabbit. with these German shepherds that are running around. I think it's a rabbit. Rabbit. <laughs> <laughs> We've got a lot of rock to choose from. Unfortunately, a lot of the rock is the wrong rock. Yeah. There's so much, so much of this stuff. And I think it's really important when you guys are ordering your stone to make sure you mix up the sizes. To have 300 tons of stone, all of the same type of stone would be ridiculous. And then there's- To be fair though, like, so Matt actually ordered all this stone in. Uh -huh. he did a fantastic job. I mean, he doesn't build ponds for a living, so we just assume we need a lot of small stuff. It's more than we would have brought in, but all in all, he did a great job. He actually he actually really did and this stuff is something like I've never seen before Yeah, this is weird And it's almost too sharp it is too to sharp. put on the liner like grab one of those chunks look at this This is what up by us. We call a conglomerate stone So all that gravel just kind of smashed in there I don't know how it's made down here But I know up by us the glaciers make this and it'll, you'll see a bunch of pebbles all just mashed into one rock That's from the pressure of the glaciers pushing all that gravel together and then hardening it up over the time I don't know how this is made, but I imagine something similar to that There's actually some nice like that's a pallet of some big stuff right back in there There's yeah. a couple random big chunks here and there some well, nice flat ones some of this really red stuff It's soft. Like, yeah, we really should soft. actually we should actually show them that later how you can just take a hammer and yeah, Bust this up into sand this pretty effortlessly sandstone here and you can see the exposed face like that's this if you took a hammer and hit this you would probably crack it right there like effortlessly yep. but some of it's harder than others when it's gonna have this gray and stuff on it the rock is actually harder the stuff that looks real red is is too fresh like I said big day today everybody's feeling good we took it pretty easy last night and I think we'll get far I think we're gonna be busting out concrete by the end of the day we'll see bye <laughs> Update. I finished the waterfall in here. You can see all of that detail work done. The idea is that this is to look like one big rock back and through here. And so with just adding some things, some foam, some moss, chipping rocks together, getting down to more of like a bedrock type look in here, that water is just gonna come over those rocks there and then really just rip through here, kind of diffuse out. Can't wait to see what happens here. While I was doing that, Jack and Alan dug all this and then just before lunch, 
we came in, put in this liner, seamed it. So you can see where we added this seam right here. So we have a four inch seam tape and then a six inch cover tape over the top. And then we have a 30 foot wide liner that goes from here all the way back over there. In this big area here, we're actually gonna start adding some of these urns, kind of back over in this area. Alan has pushed himself to the limit. Where's the urn? Who's on the wall? Might fall off. Jack's trying to lead. <laughs> they cut out the concrete. We're getting ready for our bridge in there. But today's goal is to set that cool piece of driftwood, set these urns, get the big rocks in there. And if we can get kind of up into this area before we take off today, I think we're gonna be in super, super good shape. Tomorrow we do the bridge and then get back up into that area there. The bridge is gonna be time consuming. So let's not talk too much about it. Let's just get back at it and start setting some boulders. I told you with the warm weather, we'd get a lot done today, huh? <laughs> Thank you.